Hey folks. Realize we didn't send a reminder out early this week, so we'll see who attends. But you're certainly early. There's the wonderful Amy. Hi. Hello. If I shout, there might be a dog here. <laughs> You're rounding out your pet, uh, your pets going on. Until forever meeting. Come on. Who are you? Yes, you have a ball. Come on. I don't think you can see him. You might just get a tail. Oh no, you got a tail. There you go. The tail. Okay. You get, As it you get a tail. in the face. <laughs> no, no, no. It whacks him in the face. Very good boy. Yes. <laughs> get real. Uh, and this is a recorded call, and now you all have met Gabriel. Excellent. <laughs> well, you do have the recording master, so uh, you could always edit that part out. <laughs> Why? Also, hi, Sig Azure. Who, who's joining as Sig Azure today? I, I was awesome. wondering that, too. <laughs> Craig Peters. Oh, hey, Craig. That's my alter ego. To be fair, I join as, like, Sig whatever on a regular basis here, so who the hell knows? Yeah, I only have one alter ego at this point, so. <laughs> That's it? How boring. <laughs> you have multiple. Want me to be Sig Container D, Sig Moby. Sig. <laughs> you can be Sig Sig. We, we were having this conversation, should we call the branch uh, like a signature or something? And so he's like, oh no, please no more Sigs. So it was, it was good. Make a Sig shared image gallery. There you go. All right, we'll give a couple more minutes for folks. All right, so the KubeCon wrap up, that was good. How many people, that, oh, well, okay. So I just realized Amy Weird talked about getting some passes for folks. Um, and I guess we never really closed the loop on that. Uh, I thought I sent those back to you. You should have gotten a code for that. If we if we worked on this one, we have plenty of time to be able to fix it for November because realistically, all of the chat stuff is going on over in Slack. So. Ah, there you go. If you did reply, I, um, my question you replied, I missed it. So my fault. The, I don't know, there, I poking around, I didn't see too many that were very active. There were a few. Um, so we created all new channels and yes, I'm going back to confirm as of Wednesday, August 12th at 4.06 PM, you had it. Oh, okay, for the I record. totally own it. I, <laughs> no, no, for the record. Um, uh, we, we'll work on being able to get folks uh, codes ahead of time, but things to be able to watch for for next time. Um, we'll be creating more channels in the CNCF Slack. That's where like a whole bunch of like kind of energy is going to start rising up for KubeCon and um, I would say that will probably rise up like the week before for um, the uh, CNCF KubeCon meeting for November. So. Sweet. All right, we are, well, we're almost at the proverbial five, but we certainly have, uh, we're starting to get a good form of folks joining. So when we get started, um, let's see, the first one on our list, where was I? Okay, it is the OCI mix one. So let me just share my screen. Um, dun, 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 dun. Okay. Share. And the link I'll put. Okay, where's chat? There you go. Hold on. Uh, why do they do this? They put the chat over here. Is it more? There we go. Okay, so this is basically um, a timely continuation 
of the conversation we had around artifacts. If you remember back last year, pre-COVID, we just call it pre-COVID, uh, we had the artifacts approach that basically uses the config media type to say this is what uh, this thing is. And the majority of the artifacts at the time were things that were single manifest, you know, single manifest, not manifest list. So it was, you know, was obviously the image, the Helm chart, even Scilab's uh, singularity format, OPA and WASM, uh, as much as a bunch of others were all like, here's a single artifact. Um, they have a collection of layers, but it, it's still one thing. As we started, the, the one outside of that was CNAB uh, that we knew that they have a collection of things. Uh, obviously the image images that they, they would run uh, depending on what they were deploying and an invocation image. And then in theory, they can have other things like Helm charts and others. Uh, today, they actually put a lot of that content in the invocation image. So the only thing is the collection is the other images they deploy. But uh, I think that was mostly just basically a limitation of what was available at the time. This because they, they started pre uh, artifacts. In fact, it was their example uh, that validated that after Helm, we would go to our, uh, not being able to chase all these things individually in ACR, we wanted to do a generic approach in uh, all registries for all artifact types. So, anyway, so now that we've kind of standardized on the config object as a way to pivot what the thing is, and we talk about like an extension to a file in a file system is basically what the config object, uh, the media type says. Um, we're now ready to start thinking about index. Uh, the while CNAB has been there for a while, the one that we're really thinking about now is uh, signatures for the Notary V2 work. Um, and what that's about is basically, uh, obviously we're putting signatures you know, uh, into the registry. There's a bunch of background I can put on uh, the Notary work, but if you think about the way Notary V1 and Docker Content Trust were done, it was a separate service and a separate store and that had all kinds of challenges with it. Um, two, the same tag can be mean two different things if you wanted the signature where it went to the notary store versus not. So we've said from the beginning, we wanted to make sure that a, a signature was, um, sorry, I thought I had the list of, uh, okay, anyway. Um, we said we wanted to have natively in a registry. So that was one of the main goals of Notary V2. And then we got into conversations of if I'm putting something in a registry that needs to link to something else. So a signature is a, a detached signature, often as referred to, needs to reference another artifact that's in a registry. Then, and, and we don't want to have to change the digest or the tag of the original thing that it's signing. So I push a Helm chart, uh, we use the uh, network monitor software as an example from Webit Networks. And um, that, you know, I'll, I'll pick on Craig here because I think of Craig as lots of deployments and builds. You know, he's basically in his deployment chart, he references something as net monitor colon V1. Um, he could also reference it by the digest. That's a religious debate I don't want to get into right now. The point of both are valid. And regardless of what he references it, just because we sign it, that shouldn't change as the de deployment chart. That's an additive thing. So it works through the system and the signature uh, can be added. So we wanted a way to have separate things put in it because if you put a signature on a manifest, by definition, the manifest changes, the digest changes, and so therefore that wouldn't work. And because we have to link these things, we've been talking about a couple of ways to do that, but indexes already have a way to link reference other things. An index can reference another index and an index can reference a manifest. Um, so that's the high order bit of uh, how we're looking at using indexes to basically be a signature, uh, a validation object, a signature object. There's some other talk around whether we use the config to store the signature itself, the config object, but for the point of this conversation, I think I can simplify it, but just saying we would like to have config added to index. So now I can look at an index and see it's not an OCI multi arc image. It is a Helm, uh, sorry, a CNAB, a signature object. And for other things that we assume will people will be adding over time as well, other collections of things. So that kind of brings us to the conversation. Like, all right, we're, we'd like to follow through the conversation we had a while ago. 
Um, I realized we never actually opened an issue, so I only opened the issue recently unless I've lost track of it. I thought Mike and I, between the two of us, at least had it open somewhat. Um, oh, I remember, here it is. So I have the, the list of requirements um, that we talked about here. So maintain the original digest, multiple signatures uh, per artifact, although we actually would not, this is kind of the inverse. What we'll do here is it's not a, an index that has multiple signatures in it because that means every signature that gets added later on, again, the digest would have to change. So that's not a, what we're trying to do. It is a collection of signatures for an artifact. So there will be a collection of indexes that reference uh, a manifest. Um, and then we talked about uh, signature persistence, which is some of those details. But basically here's, and uh, because of some questions that Sam asked about last week in his PR, I actually added some better examples, which I just realized scrolling down, seeing it. So give me a second to pull that up. Uh, I must have it over here. Requirements. Any questions while I'm pulling this up? No, it makes sense. Next pick. Okay, let me just pop this one over here and switch to the README. And so I've updated this. Um, I, I'm a visual person. I was focusing on the pictures trying to convey the information and now it's too small. Um, and others, because that's the beauty, uh, Sam was like, I, I, I need any text. So I've added the, uh, the JSONs for each one of these things to try to be more Ill illustrative of some of the approaches that we had here. So if we look at this one is the current preferred method, if you will, um, that basically I push the net monitor software. Notice I've got tag V1. Uh, I'm also referencing, referencing it by a digest just to show, you know, depending on both. And then I push a signature to the registry and the signature, we're having this debate whether signatures actually get tags or not. So ignore that because that's kind of a, a different, we, we don't, we can discuss it, but it's not really relevant to whether we need a config object. But the config object would, um, sorry, uh, I'm just noticing here, it's not the config object references. What we're saying here is the index basically references, or am I just looking at the wrong example? No, I'm looking at the right example. I'm just, I, I think the picture is a little confusing. Basically, be in yeah, going the, right to left is confusing. <laughs> huh? Going right to left, I think, is a little confusing. Uh, that's fair too. Okay, I was the the order. The, the it was a sequence of events. So I think it depends on what you're reading, right to left. But that's, again, great feedback. I first push the manifest, or and I put the net monitor, and then I can put some signatures on it. Um, but I see what you're saying. So uh, that's a good point. So basically, in its manifest collection it's referencing this manifest, right? Because index right. is a manifest collection. But the thing is, I want to know that this is not a multi-arc in an image, it, a multi-arc index. It is a signature object. So things like the container D client, the Docker client, any client that's trying to work with a multi-arc index would know um, that it's not, and they should ignore it. Because uh, we're obviously trying to make sure that each of these things know. Just like if I try to pass a JPEG to the Word doc, it goes like, I don't support that and don't know what to do with it. So it just fails. Well, I mean, is that to say that multi-arc images or indexes wouldn't be able to have also these um, signatures or? No, it would. No, great, great point. In fact, that was the other one. I, I didn't uh, add that part yet. So there's two pieces of feedback from the last meeting. One was, please give me JSON to, to explode out what you're trying to say, because my pictures are not always as clear, which clearly it's not here. Um, and the other was, what happens when I sign a multi-arc image? Uh, and I didn't get that one added yet, but let's walk through what that would look like. So here, so remember, if we go back to one of the core requirements that we said, is that signatures are additive to a registry and additive to artifacts that are already in the registry. So the I, so we, we want to make sure that we never change the thing that we're signing because 
to Craig's deployment, it can't change. His deployment script can't change what it references. So if whether I push a manifest net called net monitor v1, or let's say I paste, uh, pushed a net monitor v1 multi arc uh, manifest multi arc index, and it had the net monitor v1 for Windows and the net monitor v1 for Linux, then this would actually be referencing an index, because manifest lists can reference other manifest lists. And then of course we had that conversation of what's the, the number of nesting you can do, blah, blah, blah. But uh, absolutely you could sign uh, a multi-arc index. In fact, if I'm signing a CNAB, I, this would also be an index because in theory the CNAB would be an index. And it was just saying that this index, which has a manifest collection, like if we just look right here, right, manifests, and this thing happens to be an image manifest, but another one in the collection could be uh, uh, an image index, because that's just the way it works. Sure, makes sense. And just, I mean, one, one thing is obvious, right, is that that means that the multi-arc um, is sequence matters as well there for the, uh, for the signature. Why does this, so you've, you've got a picture. Well, signature uh, sequence is going to matter for any of the, uh, any of the signatures when you add them up, right? Yeah, so here, so tell me with what you're thinking you're seeing there. Well, no, we just, I don't think we had talked earlier or before about, um, you know, the multi-arc images to actually creating a signature for, um, you know, for that. Well, what are you what makes sense suggesting when you're sense. saying ordering matters? What are you thinking that would look like? Because I, I think what I'm getting you have to, so You're going to have to create the, you know, the digest value for the elements that are referenced. And you need to add them up, right? So let me... I, I'm just talking about how the, the digest function. That's all. No, no big deal. I'm just thinking out loud more, more, more or less. Right, but what I think I'm hearing you saying is in the manifest collection, there would be a signature and the other things that the other Im the multi arc images. Is that what right. you're thinking you're seeing? Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so that's that, that's that's why I need to add the picture because that's actually not what we're suggesting. So in the multi arc case, you would have a multi arc manifest. Right, you'd have an index. Sorry, an index. Which which is a which is a, a file that has a, its own digest. Correct. And it would have a bunch of manifests to the left or right for the purpose of this picture. I'm going to put it on the left. In fact, do I have my PowerPoint that has this in it? Hold on. We can do this really quick because this is really important to clarify. Um, uh, notary scenarios. Uh, where do I have that one? Okay, so that's that. Well, let's, let's use this one. So, no, so let's say this is uh, actually, so here's my Windows and here's my Linux manifest. Okay. And then this becomes an index, right? Right. So what we're doing here is this collection, let's just say here, one M, two, two, uh, let's call this uh, Windows and one one Linux M, and I'm going to change this right. U M, and this becomes L M. So now this manifest, uh, that index actually references these two, where's my, where's the dot? All right, we're, I need something to point it to. And we'll put that one there as well. Okay, so not for production, I'm not gonna export this yet. So here's your index, like a standard, forget the stuff on the right, right? So I push that to the registry. When I wanna sign this multi-arc index, then I'm not, adding these to its list because that would mean this index digest and tag miss, uh, is changing. What I want to say is I'm adding another index. This index is going to reference this index. So the okay. ordering actually doesn't matter because um, this 
still has its normal collection in its manifest collection pointing at these two individually, the windows and, and, and its own independent digest. Right. And then there's a separate index that points to this one, which is actually the type signature. Okay. Because we wanted exactly this exactly the problem. So we wanted to avoid any ordering. Well, we not only do we want to avoid any ordering, we wanted to make sure that any clients that are already dealing with multi-arc images, they don't need to know anything about signatures per se. They can optionally add in. We didn't want to change anything to the workflow. So this Good. this whole thing on this side for multi-arc doesn't change in the least. It's only when I want to additively add something saying that this thing is now a signature object, this thing's a signature object, that the container D client, the Docker client would say, look, it, um, well, no, it, it would look and say it has a, a config type and I don't support that config type. So if it's got no, so the fallback of what I'm trying to propose here, so I'm trying to make sure that all these clients don't break, obviously, is at the very bottom, we started talking a little bit about this. Sorry, at the bottom of the wrong one is that we want to make sure that container runtime clients can check. And there's a question whether we need to bump the version. So let's just assume we bump the version for a moment and we can come back to this. And if the bump, if the version's greater than three, uh, less than three, then they just assume, hey, this is a multi-arc image. It's the only thing could have ever existed at that time. So continue as normal. If the version is greater than three, greater than equal to three, then check the config media type. First of all, if there isn't one, then you could also assume it's a multi-arc image. We're not going to force everybody to put a config, uh, an empty config in it. They could. And if it is, then that's what they should use. But if it's something else, basically the container D client says, no bueno, and out it goes. So I'm going to pause there. What is this object, the OCI index.config? What is that? Yeah, yeah. I think I've got that at the top here. So those are the two scenarios. And then here is what we're proposing. So here's what it currently is, right? It's actually already a schema for, sorry, my, which, that is OCI index, yeah. So, um, it's already a schema version two, it's a type index, and then I can have, you know, a collection of manifests. Um, so then what we're saying is possibly bump the version. My original thought was bump version. Um, Alexa was basically saying this is additive, so do we need to bump the version? Um, uh, that's a great conversation. But then we're suggesting we're adding a config object. Well, it's breaking in the backwards compatibility um, perspective. So you might, you might need 3.0 instead of 2.1 on the schema version. Yeah, yeah. So to me, it felt like, well, let's, let's skip the version thing for a second because let's talk about the, the detail because it's a great conversation. But to Derek's question, this is exactly, we're basically adding a descriptor to the index. So, okay, I was just trying to understand what is, what is this descriptor? What's inside of that? It depends on the artifact type. It could be empty. So in the artifacts approach, we actually say, and because the spec already does, support null descriptors, you know, null config objects. And all it is is saying, hey, this thing's a Helm chart. In fact, Helm doesn't have any, I don't believe Helm has anything in the config object. Um, in other ones, they can put stuff in the config object and it's completely up to that artifact type and what they want to do. In the CNAB case, they might put, hey, in this collection, this is the one that's the invocation image, and this is the one that I'm going to run. In the signature case, one of the proposals is the config object actually has the signature, the signature content, because a config object is just another uh, blob. It's just where the blob resides, instead of uh, forcing a layer on it. I, I guess then. I mean, you, you defined a media type here. I didn't know if this media type was defined. That's why I was asking. What is oh. that specific media type referring to, or is that just a filler? 
Oh, I'm so you're saying what is this specific? No, no, the one above it. The, oh, yeah, sorry, one. you're right. I was pointing at the right. I meant this one. Um, so I think I just copied. No, actually, I, I added config. So this particular media type, to your point, does not exist yet. You're right. Okay. All right. That's 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 what I was wondering because, yeah. uh, like from my perspective, the backwards compatibility would be, if there was no config defined, then you would treat it like a multi arc manifest exactly. or just a collection of images um, kind to of the point about this yeah there i mean there, there's definitely some weirdness around negotiating schema type or the, the like the schema version of media type with the coins um, because yes it's additive but if you were to pass this to an older client telling it that it's a v2 index uh, it could be really confusing, especially in this case. Oh, where... I see. So in other words, if we wanted to say we wanted to specifically call out uh, image index config, then the old clients wouldn't know how to handle it because it would probably just fail on, on content validation. Yeah, it's like the backwards versus forward compatibility, right? Like gotcha. it's, it's hard for clients to predict what new stuff might come down. So the best thing to do is to be restrictive about the content that you do get. Um, so if, if you just try to say, oh, I'm just adding a field, but if nobody knows that that field exists, that exists today, um, then it leads to what we just say is undefined behavior. And yeah. we want to try to avoid that when we can. So at least from what gets returned, uh, as much as they hate using the media type for negotiating with the registry, sometimes the registry coming back and saying, hey, this is an index V3, um, and just let the clients just choke on that. And just say, I don't know what yeah. that is. Yeah. And luckily, we don't have like thousands of different clients. Like we, we all know the people that own all the relevant clients, and so we can all knock on their door going, hey, can you make a change? In fact, here's the PR. Um, I mean, it's not about getting the change in. It's about getting the change deployed. Fair. Totally fair. Totally fair. I mean, I think it's just safe to assume that like, yeah, registries uh, will sometimes be ahead of the client, but sometimes the clients will be ahead of the registry. Like it's really hard to like know yeah. what, what content you might be fetching. I was just kind of running an idea in my head is from a, at the registry when we're getting the request, do we know, does the client declare enough in the header that we know it's a Docker client or container decline or something. We can just say, if you're asking for something like, well, first of all, they have to know to ask. So these are not going to be named something can hopefully confusing. Like if somebody the clients use an accept header today, that's, that's why I said like the accept header is not great, but it's like yeah. the, the solution we have today where the client will actually tell the registry explicitly what media types it supports. Yeah, that's fair. So what I was, so I, but at the same, and, and it's good, but if we think about how this gets minimized, like uh, I'll pick on Mike, because uh, Craig disappeared on me. Um, although Mike just hit his camera too. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I mean, he's still got the KubeCon background, way to go. Uh, I, I, anyway, so we, it's not like we're using tags that, well, obviously a user can do whatever they want. If they want to put out something that says, uh, you know, hello world v1 and somebody a client assumes that that's a you know, was trying to deploy that tag by something that's that's fine my assumption is most of these things that people are going to push are going to be named something that don't overlap with something that already exists so somebody has to explicitly tell the container d runtime to try to run something that it couldn't run it's kind of like i intentionally pass a jpeg to the word doc example um like I don't know. I'm just I'm just thinking the, the, through the permutations. I mean, obviously, we want to run some tests, and we want to see what this thing you know winds up doing. But hopefully, uh, it's not like we're breaking existing deployments, so to speak, of uh, things that people are already deploying. This is like newly named content in the registry, and if somebody accidentally sends that content, sends a signature directly to uh, a container D host, hopefully, it'll not blow up. <laughs> it'll just silently fail. It will require testing. Yes, absolutely. Well, our, our, our goal isn't that it silently fails. It's that it 
explicitly rejects it or doesn't understand it. I mean, that's yeah. the that be some kind of error. Yeah, I mean, the, the worst case scenario is where the client becomes confused and treats it as something else, because that's where, you know, you, you try to run something, you start unpacking data, and it's not really a container. Um, like we had this issue with like Docker and like plugins, like someone came up with some plugin mm -hmm. specification that was like different than like a normal container. And if you tried to run it as a normal container, it, it, it would fail all the way down at the run C level. It wasn't failing at like, <laughs> at a place where you'd, you'd expect it to. It was right. like they went, got the container set up and then it fails. And it's, it's, that's a really confusing place to get an error. Okay. So that's the general thing. So granted, this is just a doc that I was just kind of writing up. Um, I was I wanted to circulate this amongst the notary folks, and I wanted to circulate it amongst some folks also to get the initial round of feedback before I went and actually did a PR on it, um, a PR on the distribution spec, but to, or actually to the image spec to be fair. The other thing was as part of the notary V2 prototyping work, we're actually working on and working on me as of last night. Uh, going to take, because we have a fork of distribution in Docker distribution in uh, the Notary project, and that's where we're going to incubate all this stuff. So we were going to prototype the whole end-to-end -end experience. And if I bring that up, uh, what I'm referring to is, now we have no branching, is this experience here, where we're going to do this workflow with the NV2 client, having an artifact, so the, the net monitor image, the signature, which would be an index, and the RS client would be able to push that index to a registry. To pull all this together, um, the signature, the index, the index needs to have a config object. The distribution spec needs to have it not choke on that. And the RS client doesn't actually know anything about indexes today yet either. So we have a couple of things that we have to go off and do. So our thought process was kind of like the splash the color on the wall before you take the wall off and know you know, make a major commitment to it because we were going to prototype this figure out some of the things we would have the benefit of being able to test some of the existing clients because we'll just instance this fork of the distribution spec and see if we like it um, and if as we get all those details done then we'll have enough information to actually say all right here's the updated uh, pr to the spec um, that adds the config object, and we go from there. So that's kind of like the ordering that we were thinking about doing. Uh, not not to make it like much more complicated, but like if we had, I think we had a little bit of this issue with kind of the earlier versions of the image spec that we were trying to take something, um, trying to take the the Docker schema to. Um, specification and make something that's really, really similar with the hopes that that would help backwards compatibility. Mm -hmm. And in the end, uh, they're different media types and the backwards compatibility really didn't matter that much. Like, I, I don't know that it actually made things easier. In some cases, it might have actually made stuff more hard and confusing. Um, like, we've had some issues like uh, the implementation and in, in the distribution and the open source registry was kind of weird because it was trying to make these assumptions that they were the same when they, they weren't. Um, so that being said, it, it could actually be a good time to consider moving some of these types to the artifact spec, um, at least consider oh, that. Okay, so the spec, not changing the, the code per se. I was trying to follow up, we were trying to say we should change the schema of index or manifest slightly different because they didn't match you're what I'm saying, saying is like, like maybe, like we're gonna put the changes. Yeah, like having it be. What I'm saying is having it be image schema version three versus having it be artifacts version one or something doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, gotcha. So is this? Remember, Mike, we talked about refactoring some of the stuff that was in the image spec. And we talked about taking the schemas for index and manifest and pulling it out of the image spec so that basically distribution, image, and artifacts could reference these things as kind of independent schemas. Because it's kind of weird, the distribution spec doesn't really talk too much about it, but yet it does because we've all implemented things in the distribution that says we only accept these kind of 
uh, schemas, yet it's over in the image spec, but it doesn't actually have to be an image. So is, is that, I think that's what you're saying. Is that what you're getting at, Derek? Yeah, I guess my point is that by introducing a schema version three, it's it's not just like a minor, a minor. Oh well, because it's because it's only adding one little field, um, mm -hmm. everything's just going to magically support it. Like no, everything is going to have to go and explicitly support it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you might as well do it exactly how you want it to be done. My point is like the delta looks small. Um, but the change to clients is, is almost the same as if you were to move it somewhere completely different. So I, I guess that I'm confused because I'm not sure what, there's so many different places that we could run with it. Are you suggesting where we put the, the spec for it? Or are you saying that we don't actually have to use an art, the config object for this? I, I'm not suggesting that we, we just change everything because, uh, I think that the incremental approach is, is good. I'm just saying, yeah, that the spec, we can move the spec by doing that. If that's the, I mean, we talked about the artifact spec or the, the artifact specification being the better place to have this index. Mm -hmm. So that if you come across an index B2, you know exactly what it is and how to handle it. But if you come across an artifact spec, you know how to handle it. Like, gotcha. The handlers for these aren't going to be like, I say like, just don't expect something magic to happen in the clients because it's, it's a small change. Right. Like it's, 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 it's not necessarily a big change, but it's, it's a change that just, you have to be aware of it. Like the, the clients have to know. It's an important this, but simple change. Yeah, exactly. The impact so like, of it is pretty big. Yeah, but it's not a big change from a perspective of like, it's not hard to support, um, but it's saying that needs to be explicitly supported. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter like the names or like where the spec is. That's why I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm still trying to get a point of clarity. Are you, are you saying that, because I, I agree with the incremental approach, like we talked about blowing it up and putting a property called artifact type, like just, just make it very explicit. And there was a lot of concern around changing too many named elephants, elements. I'm not looking at elephants. That was the elephants in the room. Um, we also talked about not calling them layers, but calling them blobs, because they are blobs. And layers has an implied meaning specific to images that is not the same for other things. So which, which part? Correct me if I'm wrong, Derek, but I think you're saying you can have a V1 artifact spec that, that looks like the V2 index but also has this additional componentry rate right? this additional this additional yeah i think when I, i'm just i'm just advocating on behalf of like though like when you actually go to implement it if you were to move this to the artifact spec and call it artifact spec v1 versus having it be image spec v3 and and actually that that might be easier in some cases uh i, th I think that might actually, not be actually trying confusing. to rev the image image spec. We're really just trying to rev a schema that happens to be currently living in the image spec. Yeah, but you're introducing a, a completely new concept. That yeah. doesn't apply to images. Yeah. Well, it, it, it can apply to images, but I mean, it's a higher level concept that clients and registries will have to explicitly support. So clients if, if that it, process an image a, a, a container image, not just because it's too many things named image here. An actual container image would need to know what happens if this thing got pulled to it because they can pull it from the same registry. At the same token, the, if I understand, and I don't know if I got the factoring right, the actual container D client, by the time it gets to it, it shouldn't have gotten to it because this thing, at this point, we don't have any um, container image scenario that this, the container image itself would need an index with a config object. Yeah, so kind of convincing yeah, from, the, from the container D perspective, uh, like, yes, the client is obviously going to know about existing image stuff, but what you're adding here is whether or not you're adding knowledge of a, a newer uh, container manifest or a container image manifest or just a artifact manifest that can be a container right it's this is right. the same change to the client so if you want to clarify or if you want to fix this like confusion around around 
what or around the artifact spec not actually holding the artifact definition, yeah, then you should just do that. Or okay. you should at least consider it, I guess that's that's what I'm saying. No, what I'm not I really like about that, that option is, number three. What I really like about that is we don't have to rev the image spec, which has been a concern. Like we're not actually changing the image spec. There'll be image client tools that need to rev to understand what this new thing. Right. And the only thing you're missing is a thing that you weren't going to get anyway, which is support for the artifacts in right. the registries and clients by okay. default. Right. The only way you get that is use a different option. Right. Yeah. There's just, there's just, there's just no way to sneak it in. And I, I was comparing it with the Docker to OCI approach because there was a lot of kind of talk around like, Oh, maybe if we make it similar enough, we can just kind of sneak it in. Like don't even make any changes, but in the end, we just so, renamed it in the end. Yeah. 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 Going through that approach, like, no, that wasn't true at all. Like everything had to be like the registry and the clients, they all had to make explicit changes to get it to work. And the fact that the, the objects were really similar didn't really make that much of a difference. It, like, it made it worse. Trust me. Because they were too close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it almost they're, made it worse. Too because, close, but not exactly the same. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, and and I think that's yeah, that's speaking to the the open source registry approach specifically because it tried to use the same objects because it, it made this assumption, mm -hmm. and it actually yeah, it, it really created a little bit of a mess. Okay, um, so we're talking more about where we put the spec changes, which is awesome when we because we were weren't sure we could create another repo for the schemas or just put it in the artifacts one. I'm fine either way. Um, what I really like is it won't be in the image spec so that we don't talk about rev in the image spec because that already is a released thing. And I didn't want to kind of break the glass on that just for this. Um, as a, in addition to just the logistics of where to put this, which from a timing perspective, I'm going to try to work more on the notary stuff to kind of make sure that what we're building works before I worry about doing the, the overhead of the spec review. So this way we'll actually have a case like, hey, this is what we learned. This is what we learned about the container D clients that worked or didn't work and all the other ones like Emochi. Um, and then whatever weeks from now, we'll come back and we'll verify what we said, where do we want to put them. But before I, before I just hand off to Josh, because he had some other stuff, was there any other feedback around the, just adding the config object itself to the index? Like I love that we're talking about the details of how to do it, but is there any other questions or concerns that we wanted to account for? Okay. So um, Alexa had some questions. I answered them. I thought I did. I didn't hear back. So uh, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll, we'll see if there's anything new there. There is some different conversations of whether it's actually a config object. The signature isn't a config or a manifest, but honestly, that's like an implementation detail of how that particular artifact works, being the notary client. Um, the whole idea is that's the freedom. It's like different artifacts can use the different technologies as they choose. That's the beauty of this approach. Um, so if there's nothing else, I'll hand off. I think Josh, you were next, right? Hello. Hello, you're in a yeah. tunnel. Um, may I do a share, Steve? Oh yeah, I'm still sharing. Let me get out of there. All right, so I had two things on the agenda. So um, in the ongoing effort to get a distribution spec one zero, um, I had a, we had a meeting um, with Derek and Jimmy and we came to the conclusion to take the remaining mini updates. Um, we've had several of them closed. I think one through six were closed. Take the remainder and put them into one final PR, so number 178, um, basically is the remaining changes. And then there was another comment Derek made that we were ripping, we're basically going from like a 4,000 line uh, spec to a 400 line spec. Um, and so in order not to lose some of the deep de detail we had from the original, we took a big chunk of it um, from the 4,000 line one and put it into a new file detail, which seemed like a good, uh, you know, short-term solution. And then eventually maybe the detail can be generated from 
conformance tests or something like that. But um, so, you know, here's just my weekly, um, please help review this uh, message. Um, the diff will be a little strange. So this is the actual um, 400 line spec can be found here. I can throw that in HackMD. Um, but, you know, if, if people uh, make comments on here, like I see Sergey actually made a bunch of comments, we'll be sure to, um, you know, get back to it ASAP so we can get this out um, as soon as possible. HackMD is very slow for me. So when you move the, the details over, um, that's, that's, there was no changes in that section to look at? For Peter, yeah. The, the same, the details section was the details section in a new file. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Yes. Correct, correct. Yeah, I mean, part of me just wants to, I feel like we should just get this merged in and take a pass over it. But, uh, yeah, I've been, we've been trying to bribe people and. Uh, we're we're so. one approval away from having a <laughs> so. Yeah. So whatever you can do, it'd be great to help. Yeah, it's been kind of, it's been like open since early June and there hasn't been a lot of shouting. So uh, I think there's, there's either one of two things going on. One, which is probably most likely people are busy and coronavirus season. And then the other one is people just don't have problems with what's being, what's being proposed. So if that, if the second is the case, then yes, let's, let's get this merged and, and move on. Yeah, I think for me it was, uh, yeah, last few weeks have been been kind of hectic. Um, but from when we looked at it before, I was at a place where I, I think we should just get this merged in and then then we can take a pass yeah. over and clean up. Yeah, and, and also it's it's RC1 is what we're trying to get. So we still have, you know, there's still, there's still a, a period where we can make some changes after the fact, but I think getting it in master will be a big, big, big step. So oh, I see Derek's in there. Yeah, so I'll merge this right now, but um, <laughs> no, I'll, go, go, I'm gonna go, wait till the end of the week and- That would be what Vincent would do, is like, all right, I'm done. Click. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll message the maintainers after this and I'll say, all right, if I don't hear from you from 5 p.m. Friday, I'm pressing the button. Um, I mean, it's just a matter of like how we want to do the kind of the finalization of of the f review. But yeah, I, th I think what this what this whole process has shown is that this this PR is not it's like the the broken up PR and just having it all in one place isn't really a, a good way to do it. Um, so I, th I think we've already shown that we're not missing a bunch of information, especially with the details still there. Uh, so we can move forward. Okay, well, since uh, I see Mike's on, but you know, since some other people aren't here, I'll give them time to disagree. But yes, I agree with you. Um, all right, so the other uh, topic was something I'm very excited about. Um, so Peter, Peter and I have been working on this project bundle bar. So this is, I, I think I brought it to OCI like early last year, but originally put online um, bundle bar as basically like a read only registry for Helm charts. And I worked with Gareth uh, Rushgrove to get a single one of his open policy agent bundles uploaded. And it was kind of just a fun demo project. Um, as we were kind of going through the conformance testing, we thought about how ways that we could prove out the conformance. And so what we did was we built our own registry and then turned it into a product. So bundle bar is basically a registry for small stuff or small artifacts. Um, I'm not here to compete with the Steve Laskers of the world and uh, the other container registries, because I think that's not, um, that's pretty much a solved problem. 
we're trying to prove out the idea that non-images can work with the OCI spec. So um, what we've done is we have a registry that we are limiting uploads to five megabytes and down. So um, you can use Aorus or other clients, even Docker to push, like you can even actually push a Docker image, but it just must be less than five megabytes. And then, you know, if you pay us uh, $25 a month, you can push up to 40 megabytes and you can have private repos and you can have immutable tags and a bunch of other fun stuff. So um, you can sign up if you wanna try it out with like a GitHub handle or with um, email password. But I'll just kind of really quickly walk through this. There's a very, very few pages on this site right now. Um, so the main page is the repos and this is just all of the repositories um, in your in your account. So it's uh, you don't have to create them ahead of time. So it's similar to, I believe, ACR in this regard, where you just push to a namespace. And if the namespace is, I think, I think our limit is 81 characters. If it's less than 81 characters, it just gets created. Um, and we also have like detection on certain types that are kind of well known right now. So Helm, WebAssembly, um, Open Policy Agent, Docker, and OCI images we're recognizing. Otherwise, it's treated as unknown. Um, and then on this page, you can list the tags and then click on the name of the tag and see the actual manifest and the command to download that artifact. Um, if you do have like a one of the pro accounts, you can set this to private or public and also mark immutable tags. Um, and from here too, you can delete individual tags and delete entire repos. Um, and then you also have a tokens page where you can create um, tokens. So I'm gonna create this, go ahead and hack me now for the next five minutes. But um, <laughs> um, so, now we have this uh, shell powered by uh, Google Cloud. So if I um, export my token and log in with Aorus, and then I have my handy docs here. So we also have like really intense docs. So if you go to bundle bar slash docs, we have a list for all these different clients and like how to use them. And we actually have our own CDN and um, signatures on these. So we took the releases, the latest releases for all these tools, uploaded it to our CDN, signed them with our public key so you can actually validate um, the signatures. But we kind of try to walk through how to use it in the simplest way possible. So for Aorus, like just trying to show that you can upload a single um, text file. And then if you go back to your repos, you have this here. It comes up under unknown. The config media type is extracted. Um, this is actually the string that's used by Horus right now if you don't provide a type. Um, but like I could do something like, Now, so it's still unknown because it's not one of our known types, but then you can see it takes like an arbitrary uh, media type here. Um, and that is it. That's all we got. And we also have this really great modal where you can send us a message and it goes right to our email. <laughs> so um, that's pretty much it. Um, any questions on that? That looks cool, eh? That's very cool. Thank uh, you. Thank you both. 
I, I'll chat with you offline, but it's just like the, the and just because just for the sake of time, not because it's not anything, but I think the latest Docker stuff that's been going on about trying to manage some costs, the amount of stuff that somebody can push into a registry and not just the storage, but the egress costs um, are some things that uh, to consider, but you've already got the size constraint, which is good. Um, and you are saying that there's this paid version, but just think about the egress costs, not just the storage costs. Oh yeah, I mean, we're just, we're just trying to get people to sign up in the first place and then, you know, the cost, uh, you know, maybe someone else will pay for that or something. I don't know. We'll just figure before, it out. We, we have all the registries have started up without worrying about some of this stuff and we're all trying to come back and clean up the stuff we didn't have to wor worry about back then. And so uh, some of them are not going as smoothly for customer experiences, so to speak. Um, well, I, I appreciate um, you looking out. I, I also have friends who are concerned of what if people upload viruses and I'm now having uh, panic attacks before bed. So anybody who has, uh, you know, Free advice on how to operate something like this, let me know. But we, we do have surveillance, so. I heard you can just put some bleach on it and you'll be fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> bleach bit. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't. couldn't <laughs> Josh, if you want some other people to be able to help look at this, we can take it offline as far as what kind of security we should be thinking about here. Oh, yes, definitely. And I also, definitely. we're also being very generous. We added a, uh, a bug bounty where I'll actually pay you $1,000 out of my pocket if you can break in. So, but yes, Amy, yes, please hook me up with the best of the best. Come drop me an email and I'll go hunt down folks for you. Okay. The wonderful supportive. So just the first, awesome. the first, the first break in or each, each break in we get. Well, <laughs> Mike's I think that should be done. <laughs> let's, well, let's, yeah, yeah, between repairs, I think we, we paused the, the bounty. Oh, okay. We'll have to review our, we'll, we'll uh, review our terms, but. Just kidding. <laughs> but uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, um, mo you know, I, yes, there's a money thing involved here. Like we'd love for this to be a business opportunity, but also um, really just trying to explore pushing the spec forward and these new concepts. And I was also talking to Steve about potentially, you know, uh, being the sacrificial goat for Notary V2 and, you know, so we don't have the stability, uh, we don't have the stability requirements as other people, so let us experiment for you and, uh, you know, also just trying to have some fun here during coronavirus. Cool. And who doesn't like blood orange, right? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Good stuff, man. Cheers. That's awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Um, did we just finish just before our time? Wow. All right. Um, I, we don't have any particular agenda next week, but please, the people, we've been with KubeCon done. We were, summer's sadly coming to an end. Um, please post things for next week. And uh, if we have content, we'll have next week. If not, we'll Trying to try to get the can't. Uh, Amy and I are tagging each other on Mondays. Like, do we sure we have content for this week? If not, let's free up people's uh, agenda. So, uh, please get agenda items in before Monday morning, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, folks. Good to see you all. Bye, all. Bye.